Shalom, and welcome to Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're going to be looking at Leviticus chapter 25. There are 55 verses. Beginning in verse 2, the land shall rest, which I give to you for its Sabbaths to Yah. Verses, when you come into the land, which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath to Yah. So we can see the difference here is that it's not only a rest or a Sabbath, uh, but the land has its own Sabbaths. It says here in the Septuagint, for its Sabbaths. Verse 3, vine versus vineyard, continuous difference. Verse 4, 2, uh, verses 4, so uh, dedicated to, separated to, or recognized as, verses 4. Uh, 5, verse 5 says, produce of your field versus your harvest. So it's specific that it's from your field. Verse 6, food versus meat. Uh, meat does not mean uh, literally meat or animal meat. It means meal or food. So any kind of food you eat, that's meat or meat. Verse 8, weeks of years versus Sabbaths of years. So that's a little more confusing in the Maz. What is a Sabbath of years? Seven Sabbaths of years versus uh, weeks. It shall be seven weeks of years. Okay, verse 9. The whole verse is different. Pardon me. There's a little technical difficulty. Let me repeat that. <clears throat> verse 9. Let's read this uh, Masoretic first. Uh, Jubilee was added. Here it says, Then shall you cause the trumpet of the Jubile, sorry, the Jubile to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all the land, all your land. The Septuagint says, In the seventh month, on the tenth, tenth day of the month, you shall make a proclamation with the sound of a trumpet in all your land. On the day of atonement, you shall make a proclamation with a trumpet in all your land. So uh, we can see it is a proclamation, uh, not so in the Masoretic. Okay. Verse 10, a year of release was omitted. This sounds like the happiest year, the happiest time for people who have been voluntary servants. That's the impression I got. Uh, verse 11, it's dedicated fruits versus uh your vine undressed. So that's a big difference or a significant difference at the very least. Verse 12, of release was omitted. Uh, fruits versus increase. And that's a continuous difference. Verse 13, one versus man. Uh, 16 sounds like economics to me. Let's, let's just look at that. Uh, according as a greater number of years, he shall increase his possession. And according as... A less number of years he shall lessen his possession, for according to the number of his crops, so shall he sell to you. So that's just economics there. Verse 18, ordinances versus statutes. Verse 21, miraculous. This is a miraculous thing happening here. I will send my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and the land shall produce its fruits for three years. Again, that defies laws of agriculture, or maybe it is a law of agriculture that simply exists, but we have is untapped it's untapped because nobody is keeping this or very few people are if if any are keeping it so it's a law of agriculture that yah has created much like much like the law of circumcision where on the eighth day the vitamin k or clotting factor is at its highest uh, for a newborn a male child who who has been circumcised or or whatever it is, they, they simply have more vitamin K on that eighth day. There will be an increase on the sixth year. That's what it says here. That is as much as three years worth of crops, of harvesting. And then you will plant again in the eighth year, and you can uh, 
Watt again in the ninth year. I'm not sure what Watt is. Uh, I think it's eat. You shall eat again. It's a typo. So you can eat again in the ninth year. That's in verse 22. Uh, let me just note that there. Okay. Verse 23, before me versus with me. Um, verses uh, 27, looking at verse 27. Give what is due versus restore the over technical difficulties. Verse, verse 27, so repeat verse 27 because uh, I cut out there. Give what is due versus restore the overplus. Verse 28, his hand have not prospered sufficiently versus not be able to. So that's a significant difference. It's saying in the Septuagint that he just didn't have a big, uh, you know, things were not good for him. It was not a good year versus he just can't, he's not able to for whatever reason. So it's more specific in the Septuagint. Um, verse 30, interesting law about dwellings in a walled city. So you can take a look at that in your own time, but it's an interesting law that, uh, yeah, it's an interesting law about, about, uh, I lost my spot. Okay, 31, 30, verse 30. If you live in a walled city. And then verse 33, excuse me, <clears throat> verse 33, and the city uh, was added in the Maz, and then verse 34, lands set apart versus field of the suburbs. 35 is a good law to present to fellow believers. Uh, let me just look at this law. In its entirety, if your brother who is with you become poor, so someone in the faith becomes poor and he fail in resources with you, you shall help him as a stranger and a sojourner and your, your brother shall live with you. So he's going to live in your house. You're going to have a new tenant. You're going to help him to, you know, get his feet back under him. Uh, and then help. The word help versus relieve. So you're not relieving him, you're actually helping him. Uh, this may be referring to physical brothers, though. Uh, perhaps physical, you know, blood related. Maybe not those in the faith, but I think the spiritual application would be you're extending your help to those in the faith. Uh, I am Yah was omitted. And shall versus may. One is mandatory, uh, which is the uh, Septuagint, and then the Masoretic is a optional law. Verse 37, to be returned with, versus uh, 4. So you repay with interest in the first instance, and in the latter it, you pay 4. So that's an interesting difference. Uh, you shall not lend your meat to him to be returned with interest, to be repaid with interest. Uh, on the other hand, it says here, your money upon usury, you shall not give him your money upon usury, nor lend him your victuals. Uh, so anyway, that's the difference there. Uh, I can't really get into that. I, want, I don't want to make this video too long. Verse 38, AO as omit. Okay, so something was omitted. I think it's so as. It's a typo again. So as was omitted. Verse 39. Slave versus bond servant, uh, not a big difference there, but uh, noteworthy terminology wise. Verse 40, he will earn wages. Verse 40, repeating verse 40 because of the sound issues, he will earn wages instead of work to pay off a debt. So he's going to work uh, versus instead of working to pay off a debt. Okay, he, he will be a hireling. He will work for you till the year of release versus uh, as a hired servant. He will be with you. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay. He shall work for you versus shall be with you and serve you. Okay, it isn't the same thing. So he's going to be your, your worker. He's going to work for you versus he's just going to be with you and serve you. So it's more specific. He, he is going to be your hireling. He's going to be your work person. <laughs> Someone you hire, he will work for you, a laborer. Verse 42, 
not to be sold as a common servant, uh, which is a like a slave or indentured servant. Okay. And this is the law that uh, would have protected Joseph to not be sold to slavery. Verse 43, the whole verse is different. So the Masoretic says, you shall not rule over him. We're having sound issues. Let's repeat that verse 43 in the Masoretic. You shall not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear your Elohim. Septuagint says, you shall not oppress him with labor and shall fear Yah, your Elohim. So the difference here is that it's not just ruling over him with rigor, like, oh, intensity. No, you're oppressing him with work, specific, very specific action you're, is being done to him. Uh, and then verse 44, this is saying, we can have indentured voluntary servants, and we can purchase them to work for us. This is not involuntary slavery, like is depicted in movies. It's not you're just capturing people, kidnapping them, and and they're being your you know slaves. It's that's not what it's about. It's about uh, people who have voluntarily uh, is wor they're working for you on their own volition. So that's what's happening here in both uh, instances. That's scriptural slavery, not the worldly. You know, how they depict it in Hollywood. That's not the way it was in the Bible. Okay, verse 46. Permanent possessions versus possession. Uh, and then bondmen was added. So this is a significant difference because the word permanent carries a lot of weight there. And then it says, oppress his brother in labors versus rule over one another with rigor again. Uh, repeating what we just read. Uh, I believe that was in the previous one, the previous verse. Well, it was in the previous 43. It was in verse 43. Okay, so it's a re repetition of 43. The whole verse of 47 is different. There's quite a lot here. Uh, let's look at this. If a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by you and your brother that dwells by him wax poor, and sell himself to the stranger, sojourner by you, or to the stock of the stranger's family. Uh, versus, if a stranger or sojourner with you wax rich and your brother in distress, be sold to the stranger or the sojourner that is with you, or to a proselyte by extraction. So the difference here is that uh, your brother, whatever the case is, is sold to the stranger. It doesn't have to be poor. And... Uh, so he is sold to the stranger that is with you or to a proselyte, so a new convert. So that's a different thing. Oh, that's a bit of difficulty. Sorry about that. Okay, let me repeat what I just said. Uh, so it's a big difference where you have your brother uh, working under a proselyte, which is a new convert, versus just uh, the stock of the stranger's family. So that's a different thing altogether. Verse 50, wrapping up here, verse 50 says, and the money year to year. So it's, uh, and the money of his purchase shall be as that of a hireling. He shall be with him from year to year. Uh, verses, and the price of his sale shall be according to the number of years. According to the time of a hired servant, shall it be with him. So uh, you can see that, the clear difference here is that in the Septuagint, you're paying him a wage. The money of his purchase shall be, uh, so you're, you're, the money that you, you pay for him will be as that of a worker. Uh, and it will be with him. He shall be with him from year to year. Um, whether that's the wage or the purchaser, it's hard to say, but uh, you're going to give him uh, what is due. You're not going to rob him of his wages or whatever he's worth. In the Masoretic, it says that the price of his sale shall be according to the number of years. So it doesn't say according to that of a hireling. Uh, oh, it does. It does say that. Never mind. It says according to the time, to the time of a hired servant, not just that of a hireling. So there's a standard here. 
where a hireling is is due a certain amount. And here it just says according to the time. So it's pretty different. And it shall shall it be with him. It doesn't say from year to year. So people can, uh, you know, it says here it shall be according to the number of years. So you just, you know, you can either pay it in full in the beginning or maybe at the end, but it doesn't seem to uh, hold anyone accountable to pay the amount, the right amount every year. Whereas in the Septuagint, you know, you have to give them uh, what is due from year to year. So it's regularly given, there's a regularity, there's a consistency, a pattern being uh, done here. Verse 53 says here, before you, uh, versus in your sight. So some people could use a loophole and say, oh, I didn't see it, so you know I can do it as long as it's not in my sight, but that's not what it's saying. That's being a little, a little facetious, a little silly there. Verse 54, if, if he do not pay his ransom versus if he be not redeemed. So both speak of the redeemer, in this case, the uncle or family member. Uh, verse 55, the last verse, we're looking at attendants versus servants. Uh, they are my attendants. Okay. I, Yah, your Elohim, uh, is in the next chapter. Uh, this part here, it's actually in the next chapter in the Septuagint, so it's not omitted. Proving that what this does is prove, let's look at this. I am Yah, your Elohim. So that's the way it ends in the Masoretic. If you go to the next chapter, you will see the very first verse says, I, Yah, your Elohim. Just in case there was a question of whether it's omitted, it says right there, I, Yah, your Elohim. So this proves that these divisions of chapters and verses are not in the original, original, in either the Masoretic text or the Septuagint. They are man-made uh, measurements to uh, divide the scripture so that things can be referenced and searched up much quicker, quicker, more quickly. And that's all I have for today. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, may Yah bless you and make your way prosperous. You've been watching Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Please like, please subscribe, and I thank you very much for your support. Shalom.